Have you ever heard of trend-following strategies in investing? In this video, we're going to dive deeper into what trend-following is by proving three specific strategies and their historical performance. Finally, in the end of the video, we'll wrap things up by examining the pros and cons of trend-following and whether it's a viable strategy for you to consider. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn how you can improve your trading game. Before we start, we remind you that you find our best strategies on our webpage. We have hundreds of trading strategies proven with backtests and statistics. At its core, trend following is all about capturing extended moves in the financial markets, whether they're going up or down. But here's the thing. Trend followers aren't trying to predict the future. They're not trying to predict tops and bottoms, or anything else for that matter. They're simply looking to take advantage of moves in different asset classes and capture as much of them as possible. Let's look at our trend-following strategies. The first strategy uses monthly bars on S&P 500, and the trading rules are simple. When the close of the current month crosses above the 12-month simple moving average, we go long. When the close of the current month crosses below the 12-month simple moving average, we sell and stay in cash until we get a buy signal. We back-tested the strategy on S&P 500 since 1960 and got the following equity curve. The annual return is 6.6%, not including reinvested dividends, and this is just a tad lower than buy and hold's return of 7%. However, the trend-following strategy has significantly lower drawdowns at 26%. To see how good the strategy is, we zoom in and look at the performance of SPY, the ETF that tracks S&P 500 since its inception in 1993. The red line is our trend following strategy, and you can clearly see you avoid much of the drawdowns. If we factor in that the strategy was invested just 68% of the time, we might argue the risk-adjusted return is significantly better at 9.6%. We find the risk-adjusted return by dividing the return by the time spent in the market. Let's go to our second strategy, the Golden Cross. The rules are simple. When the 50-day moving average crosses above the 200-day moving average, it signals a bullish breakout, and you buy. Conversely, when the 50-day moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average, it signals a bearish breakout, and you sell your position. Let's show you an example. In this example, the 50-day moving average broke above the 200-day moving average, signaling a bullish breakout. You could have bought the S&P 500 in July 2020 at 2867 and ridden the trend until you sold in March 2022 at 4173 for a nice 32.4% gain. Of course, not all trades turn out this well. But how does the Golden Cross strategy perform over the long term? We back-tested the strategy on the S&P 500. The 32 trades since 1960 returned this equity curve. The annual return was 6.6%, and again this is slightly below buy and holds of 7%, but the return is managed with significantly less drawdowns because the strategy is invested just 69% of the time. Golden Cross's results are impressive if we factor in the risk-adjusted return at 9.5% which we calculate by dividing the annual return of 6.6% by the time spent in the market, 0.69. Today's last trend following strategy is based on the super trend indicator, which is based on weekly bars. The super trend indicator calculates a median price of a candle and adds bands above and below the median price. The bands use a 10-week look-back period and three times the average true range. The supertrend indicator takes on the values of both the lower and upper bands alternatively, but with the condition that the lower band cannot decrease and the upper band cannot increase. If this happens, the supertrend indicator takes on the value of the relative band of the previous period. When the closing price of a candle crosses the value of the supertrend indicator from the previous period, the indicator begins to follow the opposite band, leading to a reversal in trend. Let's backtest and we use the following trading rules for S&P 500. Buy when the close of a bar crosses above the previous value of the super trend indicator. Sell when the close of a bar crosses below the previous value of the super trend indicator. The example on the screen shows a trade example of 44%, but of course not all trades turn out so well. 
Any trend following strategy is dependent on a few big gains, so it's paramount you don't cut winners short. When we backtest on S&P 500, we get the following equity curve. The 38 trades made annual gains of almost 6%, which is one percentage point lower than buy and hold. But again, the strategy is invested only 62% of the time, and thus we can argue the risk-adjusted return is 9.5%. You have now seen a few trend-following strategies, and let's sum up the advantages of trend-following. The strategies we showed you today are all incredibly simple, and they don't require much time to manage. Furthermore, you are not timing the market, and buy and sell signals are determined by the market. However, keep in mind that trend followers have disadvantages. Because trends are prone to sudden reversals, you must expect to get whipsawed a lot. The win rate is low, and you must accept frequent losing trades. Most likely, just a few trades make most of the gains, and hence you need to fight the urge to cut winners short. That's all for today. If you are interested in code or to dig deeper into these trend-following concepts, you can always find more strategies and articles on our website. Also, if you like this video, I highly recommend our video about swing trading strategies that will complement a portfolio of trend-following strategies perfectly. You can find that here. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It means a lot to us and helps our channel to grow.